What is the pandemic's worst case scenario and are, are, are we living it? I, uh, I think that worst case scenario is that states continue to reopen and they don't have a reality check on what that means for these cases that are sweeping across the country. Um, you know, we're seeing broad increases in cases across the country and states continue reopening activities. Um, I heard someone say the other day that we're done with coronavirus, but coronavirus isn't done with us. And I think it's very true. People are going back to business as usual, and it's absolutely not business as usual right now. Lauren, you are in critical preparedness. What have we learned about masks? Give me the straight story on masks. Yeah, there still continues to be a lot of talk and a lot of politi pol politicalization about masks. And I, I think it's really, it's, it's making it hard across the country to do the public health measures that we need. I mean, we're learning more and more about masks every day. We're seeing the efficacy. We're seeing that my mask protects you, that your mask protects me, um, and that all the masks protect the vulnerable people in our community, um, and that they're an important public health measure. When mm -hmm. we still don't have a lot of options for vac we have no vaccine, we don't have a lot of therapeutics, mas masks are a critical tool in our toolkit. Tell us, Lauren, about your thoughts on the demographics and the reality of a retired Florida. I believe the statistics are one in five or one in four people in Florida are over some advanced age like 39 or 49. I make a joke about it, but Lauren, this is really serious. There's a lot of old people down there. What's it mean? Yeah, so Florida has a really vulnerable population. Um, we know that the elderly are more affected. We know that um, a lot of people in Florida have multiple comorbidities. Um, they are an aging population and the cases are surging there. Um, the, the social distancing activities that need to happen need to happen now. Um, and I believe I saw recently that masking is, is starting to be encouraged in Florida. I think the um, governor uh, mentioned something about it the other day. I, I can't remember exactly what he said, but I think the, the key is that these activities are are important both for the the general popul population that's in Florida, but also to protect this vulnerable population, to protect the people who are older, to protect the people who have um, comorbidities that mean that if they get COVID, that their their case will be much worse. Lauren, sometimes it's difficult to understand, you know, the end game of this. Are we just trying to weigh it out or wait it out until we have a vaccine? Or is this about, you know, trying to get some kind of herd immunity whilst at the same time giving our health services a break? I don't know, how, you know, what the optimal situation would be, what we're trying to achieve. I know we're trying to save lives, but how and for how long? Yeah, we're trying to save lives for sure. Um, and I think we're trying to protect the community and protect in particular the health system as we approach a vaccine. Um, a vaccine is definitely the goal. I don't think herd immunity is a viable option. Um, I mean, we'll get there eventually, but we will lose a lot of lives if we don't use, um, if we don't stay home, if we don't use masks and, and we don't get a vaccine. Uh, we're still learning a lot about what the durable immunity looks like in patients who have recovered from COVID-19. Uh, the vaccine is, is definitely the target. Um, how long do we have to live with this vaccine, Lauren? One of the things that, you know, we hear about may, on social media or maybe just people just being, frankly, fed up of being in lockdown is, well, they want to try and do something in the summer when the virus could potentially be less lethal than then come the fall. Yeah, I think that um, there's there's a lot to learn about seasonality. So we're we're in probably our first season, I would say, of coronavirus. And so um, there is possibility because it, we see it in other coronaviruses that there may be a seasonality the warmer weather may um, may reduce the number of cases but we also have a really susceptible population right now since it's the first time we're ever being exposed to this so I think the social distancing and the lockdown has to continue uh, at least in in certain ways being outside is certainly safer than being inside being away from large crowds is safer than being with large crowds so you can still get out and about while being really cautious and careful about your surroundings and just you know think about the risk think about am I going to be in a huge crowd? Am I going to be outside or in a well-ventilated area? And, and those are the ways we can sort of bide our time until we get to that vaccine. Um, Dr. Fauci said just yesterday that it, it, 
it is it, it is close and we have some viable candidates Lauren, I don't know how many, you know, how many people have had the vaccine, if it's 5 percent of the population, if it's 10 percent. But are those people safe to go out? Do we know how long they have immunity, if they have immunity in the first place? People who've had the virus? Yes. Yeah. Um, so we don't know enough about immunity. I, I would imagine that for the short term, they are relatively safe. Um, but we also see a lot of information coming out on viral shedding. And there's people doing studies right now to understand it, if that if that virus is infectious, um, if it can get other people sick. There's a lot of work to be done in that space. But I think, um, you know, there's probably some good evidence that there's short-term immunity, but we just don't know how long it lasts.